with somebody. Hey, y'all, it's Diamond. Oh, shoot. <laughs> I didn't know we were recording. <laughs> y'all ain't saying nothing. <laughs> hey, hey y'all, it's Shay. Yo, it's your girl, Jasmine, and welcome to New Age Mamas. What's up, everybody? It's been a long time. It's been a long time. Yes. How are you? I am good. It's been probably a, almost going on a month since we talked, since we had a nice recording sesh, but I'm good. You know, birthday celebrations. Oh, y'all. Your girl is licensed in the state of Illinois for being a home oh, inspector. Here you go. I am yay. licensed. I'm official. Come on now. <laughs> here you Congrats. Thank you. So yep, yeah, that's that's all that's going on. Yeah, happy birthday. Shout out to Jazz, yes. y'all. Happy birthday. Tell them how old you turn. Learn at 30. Learn at 30. <laughs> Yes. Okay. Look, welcome, welcome into this new season. Like, yes, come on now with it. We've yes, been, yes. So we've what, been along this journey, like you know, as listeners, if you've been along, like there's time where you felt discouraged, but we kept encouraging you. You kept working, and look at you now. Come on, look at me now. Look, I'm licensed. <laughs> <laughs> Y'all just gonna make a song out of anything. Make it. (laughs) Yeah. So what y'all been up to? Nothing much. I've been I've been chilling. Besides my toddler working my nerves, I I've been pretty okay. So I I've been good. I was done with school. Finna be finna have a rap. Like I'm cool. You said finna have a rap. No, finna wrap it up. Oh, I'm like, okay, you about to get a silk press wrap? I ain't heard the Girl, this head will go past my ears talking about a silk press. Diamond, you don't show us, so I don't know. Like, you never... Yeah, that that's why I don't show y'all, because it ain't nothing to show. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Yes, and for the graduation... Doo-doo, right, doo-doo. done with school. Miss graduated with her master. Mm-hmm. Okay. Mastered it. Yeah. Did you take graduation photos? I did. Oh, nice. And I'm so excited on dropping them. I can't wait for you guys to see. When them. are you dropping them? Yeah. <laughs> okay. So me and my brother actually graduates to get well around the same time. Um, we go to two different schools and whatever. He's graduating with his bachelor's. I'm graduating with my master's. Um, so we took some together. So he oh, his cute. graduation is first. Um, actually this weekend his graduation is on Sunday the thirtieth. So mm-hmm. I'm trying to wait to basically like he post his pictures and drop them and then that's when I'll go um afterwards. So yeah. And also I'm waiting on the person that did my photos, um, I'm waiting on her to send it back. And I also have a video that she created. So oh, I'm waiting nice. on that. That's going to be nice. Yeah. What is he getting his degree in? He has a sports ma- sports management. Oh, okay. That's what's up. Nice. Congrats to him. Mm-hmm. Thank you. Okay. Yeah. So I know your family like, whoop, 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 whoop. Yeah, I was just going to say that. Your yes, wow. I sent y'all the invitations already. Don't forget, I'm going to send out a two-week reminder for the graduation party. Yes, it's yeah. in my, um, it's in my Cali. Yeah. May you say, I know you stay five, so if you can't make it, it's okay. But yeah, definitely yeah, send okay. out. I said, I know you stay far, so if you can't make it, it's okay. But I'm going to definitely make sure I make time for this. Oh, oh she gonna be there, y'all. So she gonna be New in Age Mama's gonna be in the building. <laughs> we in the house. We in the house. I just uh, this month has been so crazy. It's like I haven't had time to stop and think about like what I got going on in the future. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So what's yeah. been going so on? Tell in us your what's world? been going on. Right. Look at Jazz. <laughs> <laughs> Um, well, first, um, I want to tell y'all about my daughter and what she got going on. So last week or so, she, um, ate some, yeah, she ate some diaper rash cream. Like, don't know what she was doing. Don't know. Kids, when they get stuff, then they just put them in their mouth. You know, she was in her room. She got too quiet. 
went in there and she had put around her mouth, you know, like Tyrone Biggum. Mm-hmm. Um, it messed up her stomach for the rest of the week. She was having blowouts. Oh, one time. I'm telling you, pulled in the diaper, okay? Like, me and her father, like, carefully trying to get her to the back. Oh, so, like, no. Down the side type of ordeal. Yeah. Um, poor baby. Like, yeah. And she up. had to stay out of school, poor right? Up. I'm a victim. Tell me I'm a victim. I think I told you about poop gate. This was the real poop gate. The last What's time. What's a poop when gate? The, you know, like, when just, like, um... You put gate behind something, it's like a scandal type of thing. You know? no, I ain't never heard of that. I must not be hip. <laughs> you ain't never heard about Watergate, Nixon? Y'all need to know y'all history. Come on now, babies. <laughs> School me, girl. <laughs> Watergate was basically like um, the president of the United States. He was doing something crazy. I forgot the details, but he got impeached because of it. Because he was doing something he wasn't supposed to be doing. And they caught him on tape. So anytime something is crazy and you hear like, oh, this is, you know, something gate, they put gate behind it. It's a, it means it's like a scandal because mm. it's something that's good or something that's bad or some, you know, somebody was trying to hide and they got caught up. Oh. So hungry tailgate. <laughs> <laughs> I'm crying. <laughs> that was a good one. Talking about tailgate. No, for real. <laughs> and so, yeah, she she had a bit of a mess, but um, uh, so how she's I'm, doing now? She's doing better. She's doing better. And you know, like That's we're good. we're um potty training right now too. So it's just like it was difficult for her to really tell us. You know, mm-hmm. I think because she had to go all the time. <laughs> Right, she just like it, it, a fart, and it just might not be right. So, poor child. Yeah. But, um, she's doing better, and she had an early intervention evaluation last last week as too as well. So they just gave us updates on where she's at, like um, in certain areas, she's like maybe um a few months under where she's supposed to be as far as where she's at. Mm-hmm. In other areas, she's way past. Uh, her age group for what she needs to know. So it's that's good. Where, that's what I'm saying. Like, and, and most kids are like that too. Like, honestly, like there are certain milestones that they meet and other mind milestones that they don't. And we're trying to help her with the milestones that kind of matter the most as far as like her commu- communication, mm-hmm. her initiating communication. You know, she doesn't tell us consistently when she's hungry or when she wants mm. to drink or when she wants water and stuff like that. You know, a lot of her communication sometimes can be pointing or, you know, a whine or she just feels like she assumes that we're supposed to know her needs. So we're trying to get her to actually communicate them. Cause she knows the language, mm-hmm. you know, she's smarter than, uh, you know, what she gives out sometimes. And so we're just, it's good for us to have the extra resources to help her learn that because we ain't never did this before. So right. Know how to like bring that out of her, you know, because we know she have it, we know she's capable, but you know, there are certain things that we have picked up on from like her speech therapist or her OT therapist um, that helps us, you know, teach her and help her grow. And, and we've seen improvements even since our meeting. That was last week. So, um, that there's that. And then, um, so, uh, at the beginning of this year, my grandfather, I think I may have mentioned it, uh, a little bit, but if I didn't, um, I'll just remind everyone, um, my grandfather, he had a stroke and, um, he, we found him in his apartment after his stroke, basically, um, we don't know how long he had been down, but, uh, like after that, like once we found him and the police and, or the ambulance came and took him to the hospital, um, his health, his health pretty much deteriorated from then. And that was in January. So, um, he had a brain surgery. Um, he had a few seizures even during that time, but, uh, he was able to, um, 
get back into like a little bit of a better health, but nowhere near where he was prior to the stroke. Like he could take care of himself. Um, and after the fact, he couldn't. He needed you know, full time care for the most part. So um, he ended up in a nursing home for a little while, and that was really bad. It kind of like helped deteriorate his health even more. Mm. And um, my father ended up taking him to Florida with him, um, to care for him, uh, just because nobody in up here could do it. Um, so, so this is your father's father. Yeah. So this okay. is my father's father, and um, I like the beginning of April, basically he had another stroke mm. and um, he fell and he uh, like he had to go to the ambulance or whatever and so my father called and basically was like you know this time I don't know if he's gonna get any better no. uh, and I don't know how much time he has so you know I'm, I'm gonna just tell you that so um I kind of just made the decision to go down to Florida to be with him, you know, to spend some time, even if it would be the last time. And I didn't really know if I would make it in time, um, just based on how things were looking and what I was hearing and stuff like that. And honestly, by the time I got down there, um, I think like the day before it was like Sunday, I, I spoke to him him through like FaceTime and he was able to wave but he wasn't able to really speak um and by the time I like made it there through my flight and everything he was no longer like able to like really function properly and so um got there on a Monday I left on a Thursday and like literally like a few hours after I landed back here he passed mm. and so, um it was a well, like, we we do want to say sorry for your loss. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we are so sorry, Shay. Yeah. So, I um, literally like I kind of just found out, and um, my partner he was doing like a side job. Mm -hmm. at, um, I literally just went with him to help him paint. Just to just think of something. Yeah keep myself busy like <clears throat> this was the day that you found out yeah mm. so I had literally just woken up that morning at like five I think it was earlier than that because I had a flight um you know I had to drive myself to the airport because I had rented a car um you know flew in and then you know had kind of I was on my way home um from the flight so I hadn't even like got home and got settled or anything yet before I found out. And so I literally like went inside the house, changed into some more appropriate like worker type clothes mm -hmm. and then hopped back in the car with my boyfriend and we went, you know, I went to help him. Um, and this was two weeks ago from today's date. Yeah. Okay. So how are you feeling today? Um, Today... So, I don't, I really don't know how I feel, if I'm being honest. Okay. I'm going to be real. Um, I had therapy today, so I was able to talk through it a little bit mm. with my therapist. Um, and there is, like, just um, some shame there from my end. Shame and guilt. Because when people pass, you realize how much time you didn't have. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I, I always mention that my um, relationship with my family was complicated, which it is. And that's not excusing my relationship with my grandfather. And so, you know, getting to this point where, you know, not being able to have certain conversations and, you know, looking back and being like, well, man, like, I wish I could have let certain stuff go to be able to have the conversations. And then, you know, also reminding myself that I have to give myself grace. You can't predict the future, but 
Mm-hmm. Also, like, you know, in order to in order to like just move on in, in a more positive space, I have to forgive myself for the conversations that we didn't get to have. So, um, my therapist was really like instrumental in giving me like just certain um mindset changes that I kind of needed around the grief that I was feeling because I was telling her like you know I feel the sadness there but I can't touch it like I know Mm -hmm. it's there but I actually can't touch it like you know I'm not I know I'm sad but I can't feel it you know I'm not actually feeling my feelings Mm -hmm. and so um just trying to find out the best way to deal with this because you know I haven't lost a lot of people close to me but in um the the people closest to me that I have lost they've all been my grandfathers Mm. I this grandfather that I lost is pretty much the last grandfather in my life that I know and that I have actually have a relationship with Mm -hmm. so I don't have that connection you know, to a grandfather anymore, which definitely sucks. And Mm -hmm. there was so much that I wanted him to be able to still tell me about like our family lineage and like where his side of the uh, family come from. Um, Because he's, other than him, there's only two other people who share my last name in my family and neither one of them are my parents. Mm. Um, So, you know, other than my brother and my auntie now, like those are only people who share my same last name and it's a unique last name and it's it's something that means a lot and I don't have that connection to that anymore. Um so I like I said I can't really tell you how I feel, but I'm telling you I am dealing. Okay. Um, I am I'm in so much a better place than I was in the past. Just like postpart, like post having my daughter in the postpartum period, and how so many things during that time like affected me, and so I'm in a better place to handle what I'm dealing with. It is still hard, right? Um, and so I now, did now, write. Oh, go ahead. Uh, did your um, daughter get to have a relationship with him? No. Um, I think she met him maybe, uh, like a few times, no more than five, honestly. Mm-hmm. Um, and probably just more like, so co- phone conversations. He definitely call and ask about her, but she's two. So it's not like they could really like get to know each other. And that was also mm-hmm. on me, like, you know, opening the door to allow him in my life in that way, um, which I just really didn't at the time um is that some of the guilt that you think you may be holding definitely because it's it's that guilt but also it's like i'm like i said i'm still trying to honor myself because my feelings are justified you know why i kept the wall up that i did you know is justified because it's not just with him it is with other family members too and so that it does cause some guilt because it's like you don't want to hold grudges, you know, because then when they are gone, you don't get that opportunity back. But you don't want to keep people in your life if they're toxic or if they're not mm-hmm. good or anything like that, even if it is family. Do you do you mind sharing some of the mind uh, set tips that your therapist like shared and maybe not be specifically like, oh, your situation, but just for anybody who maybe who lost a grandparent or, you know, lost um, a family member, like anything that, you know, that she said to you that will probably help somebody else or that's helping you deal with this. Yeah. So, um. She said something, or she said a lot of things, and I I wrote them down today. So I'll just go through everything. So she said, uh, shame is um, I am bad, or I am something bad. And guilt is I did something bad. Ooh, I've never heard those differences. (laughs) 
I look, I was telling her, yeah. So like, you said shit. shame is I am something bad and guilt mm-hmm. is I did something bad. Yes. Okay. Yes. And then she also um so I mentioned like, you know, she's like, What are you doing to kinda of, like help you during this time? And I just mentioned like self care, but I was like, also, you can't self care everything. And so she was like, self care. She was like, she was like, you're right. And self care is proactive, not reactive. Mm. Ooh, she hitting the marks. <laughs> Ooh, okay, <laughs> okay. Let's get her a rap deal because with these lines she's spitting, come on now. <laughs> so to help me kind of deal with some of that shame and guilt too, like around, um, she was like, what would guilt say? you know, or what is my guilt saying? And, and I'm be like, you know, a little bit honest and transparent. I was saying that my guilt saying like you wasted time. Um, and like, even saying that, like I broke down, like, man, like that's what guilt was saying to me, but not in the, in a kind way. And so she was like, how could guilt rephrase that in a, in a way that gives you grace? And she was just like, you know, um, I don't remember exactly what she said, but I've kind of followed that up with just like, you know, I wish that, you know, we could have this resolved and then, you know, we can get to a place where everything is good. And she was just like, you know, when it comes to people, all the drama does not have to be resolved first in order for you to have a relationship. Mm. You just have to be willing and in a, in a space good enough for you to continue to build it have you oh i'm sorry go ahead ahead. have you um with that being said with the other relationships um um that you have in your family and the other problems you have in a while you had built up and whether or not you were feeling guilty or ashamed have you thought about um with this situation occurring has that allowed you or had you thinking about moving forward and healing or fixing those relationships with the other family members like with that being triggered with the passing of your grandfather how's that has that basically made you think about the other relationships absolutely like death does that to you um i'm trying to do it in a way where like i said i'm still honoring myself setting proper boundaries because I don't want to have done all this work and all this healing and set these boundaries for myself just for this tragedy to kind of reverse that, you know? Um, this and you definitely want to do it for the right reason. Yeah. Like, yeah. Not because, like, of course it. you're, yeah. You feel but me? not just because, like, you know, your grandfather passed. Like, you want to make sure it's the right reason and the right mm-hmm. reason for you and your daughter. <clears throat> mm-hmm. like, you know, it's easy for people to try to manipulate a tough situation in their favor, especially mm. if you know, they want you in their life. And, you know, for example, my dad in, the, in that case, this situation has, has kind of forced us to have a conversation that I really wasn't ready to have. Mm. And that's where my therapist kind of reminded me, like things don't have to be resolved for you to still have a relationship or build a relationship. It just has to, you have to take that step to move forward and, and put in that effort. So I have a question on that because I feel what she's saying is so powerful. And I'm also like, I'm pretty sure other people have this question when she says that it, by you mean it doesn't have by what you're saying it doesn't have to be resolved to go ahead and start a relationship does that mean that you have to forgive at least to go ahead and move forward or is she still saying like you have to still heal and forgive but it's still not resolved is how am I trying to say what I want to say like you're I, I think I get you get you get what I'm trying to say yeah So she's not saying that you have to like just drop it, but it doesn't like, let's say you have an issue with somebody and y'all don't talk and then y'all have a conversation. The issue doesn't have to be resolved in that conversation in order for y'all to be getting somewhere. 
Okay. You know, it takes time to get to a place where, you know, you don't, because you don't fix stuff in a day. Like, me and my dad had a conversation, but that doesn't mean things are resolved. But it does mean that we can take the steps towards resolving, which I was not open to prior to. Mm, okay. At least not at this time. Mm-hmm. You know? But it also, that's not the only conversation I had to have. I had to have a conversation with my grandmother as well. Because the conflict with my father, like, kind of, you know, spread it out into those other relationships. And, you know, just older generation feeling like, you know, that's your parent. Like, you know, you suck it up and you whatever they did, you got to let it go. And, you know, me and this newer generation, I'm like, I want healthy relationships all around. You know, mm-hmm. I don't care if you're my mom or my daddy, if you're not in my life positively. And I'm not even saying you have to be a great person, you know, but if I feel like you are negatively contributing to my life, which I felt like my dad was at the time, like I just, you can't be around, you know, especially if you're being hurtful too. Mm, okay. Hurt, you know, on me and my child. Okay. And so, you know, my, my grandfather, he was not perfect by any means. And my dad did not have the best relationship with his father going into this situation as well. Um, They kind of had a similar kind of falling out like me and he did, and they weren't on speaking terms. And so seeing it from the other side too, like I'm not losing my dad, but seeing my dad lose his dad and- Hurt you. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. You know, regardless. And knowing that that could, that could be us if we don't fix this. I wonder um, if both parties will have to understand that because everyone has their own mindset. And of course you're seeing the therapist and she's leading you in a direction um, that is, you know, right. So I wonder like what you said, like, you know, you guys are can have a conversation and to talk, but doesn't mean that it heals everything, that solves everything. But in some people's mind, that was that's that first step, that first conversation it was like, Wow, I'm probably getting my daughter back. We probably back on the right track mm-hmm. in his mind. So it's like you also have to have that conversation outside of that one and it's like, Hey, I know we had a conversation, don't think everything peaches and cream. <laughs> Like, you know, yeah. let me just lay this out because some people, honestly, some people think that's the that's the next All step. Forgotten. <laughs> yeah, yeah like I, they, we swept it under the rug. We didn't. Maybe it don't have to be addressed. Maybe it wasn't a big of an issue. It's left alone. We moved on. A tragedy happened. This is bringing us together. And unfortunately, a lot of families that tend to happen when a tragedy happens. That's when families get together, and that. It's honestly sad. I don't too much like it. Like, um, I had like my family had every family has fallen outs. Um, no family is perfect by any means, but literally, um, my family is very family oriented and stuff. But one moment, like we had a big falling out, um, and everybody was like separate and stuff like that. And my cousin had made a post on facebook basically was saying like i wish my family you know can rekindle and get back Mm. and another one of my cousins commented and said the only way we're going to get back together is if a death happened in the family oh my god and i just felt that so crazy like we can get together for a funeral no that's unacceptable especially if we were so family oriented before then and a falling out happened and then it's like okay we're for you to have that mindset that we can only get together for a funeral is kind of messed up. So it's like, yeah, you want families to be able to get together before then, but if that happens and the family has to get together for a funeral, problems should be, you know, resolved and squashed, but, and not all the time, it's not going to happen right then. Now. You're not going to fix it overnight. You're not going to fix it before, during funeral planning. You're not going to fix it after the barrier, you're not going to fix it right then and there, but it should be addressed and both parties need to have the same understanding. Yeah. yeah. And you, I do feel like people have to be willing to have the conversation. I, what I can mm-hmm. say is 
my dad during the conversation showed me ways in which he was genuinely hearing me in the conversation. Mm. Um, and that doesn't mean things are fixed, but it means that, okay, I... We're getting somewhere. Having, <laughs> right. We can continue having these conversations because, you know, there were, there were definitely moments where I was like, all right, you got to go. I'm not going to do this with you because you're not hearing me. And there were times I'm like, if you love me, shut up. Hear me. I know some people are like, I have never talked to my parents. Like, no, shut up because you're talking over me. You're not listening to me. And you're, you're making it seem like because you're my parent or you're old or whatever, you know everything. There's so much that I even learned from my two-year-old. There is nothing you can ever, you can't learn from your child. And that even means on how to be a better and how to be have a better relationship with them. You know, so I feel like once that kind of wall was broken down, it's like, okay, I understand that, like, I ain't talked to my daughter in almost two years. I don't, I don't have a relationship with my granddaughter, and my, do- and my dad is dying, you know. I don't want to continue going on with my life and not having a, a relationship with my children and my grandchildren. Because I'll be damned if I got to, you know, 50 and I don't have a relationship with my daughter and her children. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And then if a uncertain, un, um, a circumstance happened that was unfortunate, like what happened to your grandfather, him having a stroke and having to have somebody to come take care of him. At least your dad was like, OK, I'll I'll take care of him. I'll do what I have to do because some children or some people just be like, well, I don't know what y'all going to do. Right. And then also, like, you know, if if anything happened to me, he butchered his relationship with my partner. Mm. So him then being able to have a relationship with my daughter, that's kind of like, there. I don't know how that would happen. Because mm-hmm. I wasn't going to call that man and apologize for how you talked about him and talked about me and, and his child right in front of him. I, you know, and so I, and I've had to have this partner, this t- talk with my partner too, because he wasn't, he, I wasn't the only one hurt in the situation. Mm-hmm. He was hurt. And also just by how my father, you know, addressed my child at the time. Was very mm. disrespectful. So, you know, being a man and like, okay, I don't want to escalate the situation, but dang, you talking about my child too, you know, having to refrain and, and you know de-escalate because ultimately you don't want the the situation to get any worse Mm -hmm. so um you know over the the past year i've had to kind of learn to deal and grieve with the relationship or not have a relationship with my father and so it's kind of like now that relationship is working its way out the relationship that i don't have now my grandfather you know the repairs the conversations we didn't get to have is what haunts me like that is what has been you know hurting me the most um and just like you know as black people there is so much of our past our lineage we don't know Mm -hmm. unless we have like some of it is just like oral you know it's it's passed down and it's like unless you get that you don't know that he had so much history that I didn't know that I knew I'm like man like I need to write this down I need to sit with him I need to record it and I didn't do it and so it's just like damn like you didn't prioritize it and having to deal with the guilt of that you know I didn't make it a priority I didn't take and spend the time and I don't have it so it's been a very emotional time, but like I said, I am dealing with it and way better than I would have in the past. Um, and I did take some time off from work to be able to just relax, rest, get my life back together. Like y'all even know, like I've barely even been texting y'all. Like I kind yeah, of, like, and it just happened. Yeah, it's it's still very fresh. Like it hasn't. Like, it hasn't been a month yet or anything like that. It is still very fresh. And I don't, it, like, grieving is weird. Because, like, there are moments where, like, I'm talking and I feel okay. And there's only other moments where, I, like, I just don't want to be bothered. Like, I, I can't focus or I'm just, like. And, like, usually what's crazy is I'm a crier 
and I have really not been able to cry. Like, mm. just, and you probably like, why? That's where I'm like, where are the tears? Like, I need a good cry. Like, but um, what I am grateful for is, you know, in his last moments, he was, he, my daughter wasn't there, but um, his, his grandchildren, not his great grandchildren, his grandchildren, all of them were able to be there together. That's nice. Well, and not all of them, but most of them. He was missing two of them, unfortunately. But um, he was able to have them there with him in the room. And we talked and we laughed and we told stories. And, um, you know, my, my grandfather was a jet engine mechanic in the Air Force. Oh, wow. Extremely smart. But he just had a long just life. Like black men, they they get a lot of slack. And as a vet, like he definitely didn't get the support that he could have. And just growing up in Chicago, there's so much stuff going on. Drugs, alcohol, like just gang life and just oppression as a black man. Mm -hmm. You know, there were so many things in him in his life that he probably wouldn't have been proud of or just goals he wasn't able to attain, but there were so many times where I saw him and he always had a smile on his face. That's you good. Know? That's one thing I can think. He always had a joke or a funny. He had some fire gumbo. Not a funny. <laughs> Not <laughs> no, a funny. Like, I got a funny. A funny. Uh, <laughs> I'm going to And that. <laughs> I always loved, like, just making him laugh. Like, I always had a joke, like, I'll, and this has been going on for a long time where I would, like complain about my old bones and obviously I'm not old but it always used to tickle him that I used to say that so just you know thinking of those moments um nice how old was he 67 I believe okay he wasn't that old unfortunately but um he used to be a crossing guard in his older retired age and um me and my dad would sometimes ride up on him and be like, oh, how much is it? <laughs> <laughs> like, we had jokes like that. Or like, you know, my dad would like, break yourself, fool, or something like that. <laughs> or, you know, just silly stuff. So we, the moments we did have, they were silly, they were goofy, they were amazing. I do count that. And the moments that we didn't get to have, just due to the things that life bring about, like, it happens, but like if you are someone who's dealing with the loss, like you know, I know a lot of people lost, especially grandparents during COVID. I lost a grandfather during COVID, um, and grand losing a grandparent is is a weird thing. Whether you knew them or had a close relationship with them or not, it's still losing a part of yourself. And um, you know, if you have grandparents that you're not close with or you just need to push to connect with them I'm gonna tell you right now do it if you know if if there's anybody in your life that you're questioning whether to reach out to to rekindle a relationship to at least have the discussion and you worry about maybe how it might turn out or them not hearing you or just not being able to repair it I say at least try um, because life is too short at the end of the day. And I, I'm learning that in real time. You know, I'm having to let go of certain stubbornness or certain, you know, um, hesitance that I have in order to have the relationships that I want to have with the people that I love. You know, ultimately, kind of got to put your pride aside. And I'm not mm -hmm. saying, like, you know, ignore your feelings or ignore the boundaries that you set because I'm not. But... I am saying that certain things aren't worth wasting too much time. And at least you could say you tried. Mm -hmm. Like that'd be a key. You you try for yourself, not for the other person. So yeah. that guilt or that you know feeling you will have if they don't respond or if they don't, you know, or if something was to happen to that person, you wouldn't have, that would be one less thing on your shoulder because you could say, at least you try. Um, you don't want to wait to the last minute to try. So um, that was some great advice, Shay. Yes. Thanks for sharing. Thank you for sharing. And thank you for your vulnerability. Thank you for allowing us to see this side of you and to see this very vulnerable side of you and talk about something that is very deep 
and you know that you're in the middle of right now you're in the beginning middle of so we appreciate your vulnerability and we just want to say thank you and please pray for shay um I'll, i've been praying for you i'm going to continue to pray for you and uh and pr- pray for your family and just hope that you all stay strong and that things get better i appreciate you all too like Shout out to y'all because y'all both were just like, whatever you need. You need time. You need this. You need that. Let me know. I got you. And just having the time and not having, feeling the pressure of, like, oh, I need to get back to this. Like, no, nah, y'all don't worry about it. Take your time. Mm-hmm. I really do. Because I, like, at first I wasn't feeling like I needed it. And, you know, sometimes I push, I push through. You know, sometimes we push through, especially <laughs> as mothers, you know, because yeah. we have younger children. So my daughter doesn't understand that I'm grieving the loss of her grandfather. I can't really, you know, there's nothing. I, she, do, she doesn't really know him that much either. Mm-hmm. Or, and she wouldn't be able to understand it. I think in the article uh, we were looking at about this and, and explaining it to your child. Um, she's at an age group where she really can't understand death, you know, but I feel like if you have an older child, um, and you need help kind of like just figuring out what to say to them, kind of, I think first look at the age group, see what is important to say, you know, that will tell you more than anything. When you have an older children and they're able to understand, you know, it might be a little bit harder. Um, I know, like, um, there was a fi- a friend, a family of a friend, family friend, whatever, that um, was very close to my family when I was younger. That who died. I think I was no more than like maybe six, but I didn't understand what was going on. I just knew she wasn't coming back, you know. And when you get older, hey, saying you say because I'm like that's not funny, but the way you said it was funny. <laughs> But I'm, I'm saying it from a child's mind, too. You know, like, everybody's crying. I'm just looking around like, what's going on? Mm-hmm. Like, not, not, not insensitive in any way, but a child that is, what's going on? Why are y'all crying? Like, mm-hmm. what's going on? You know? I, and that was that was my mindset then. So I can only imagine that a child is feeling that same thing, the confusion. And especially if it's somebody that they see often, you know? Like Jazz, I know your son. He's always around his grandfather. Mm-hmm. He'd be pa 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 pa. So him just like disappearing and not being around, that would be weird for him. But it's also mm. not something you can really explain. So there's that. Yes, yes, I will. I appreciate this. Was a really good episode, and I know like. For certain things, we can't really get too depth into depth uh, with uh, like how to explain that to a child just because, you know, right now we are not dealing with those circumstances, but because, you know, Shay just said she can't explain it to her daughter. But if you all have any tips about how you how you dealt with de- uh, a loss of your grandparent and how you're dealing with that, how did you tell your child or even if your child lost their grandparent, um, how did you deal with that? And how did you tell them? So, you know, let us know uh, what's going on in your world and in your life. And so we can, you know, talk about it. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. You guys can, you know, DM us. Um, You can leave us a review on whatever platform you can, you know, or message us personally. You guys know what's Mm -hmm. usually and just, Tell us that way if you're more comfortable with doing that. So, um, basically, Shay, it's your turn for Mom of the Week. So, we need you to shout out a mom. Um, and that mom will be our Mom of the Week. And I'll post about it, share it. So. And so, I am going to do my mom. Aww. Um, my mom had a birthday. And... I just want to do, you know, a little something extra to just shout her out. She's been working hard lately. Um, just when was her birthday? April twelfth. Okay, right hey, after. Yeah, See, look at exactly. these these Aries, these April birthdays. These Aries, you know, yeah. <laughs> we the best. <laughs> yeah. So shout out 
out to my mama. I love you, mama. Um, <laughs> that's all. That's all I got. Shout out to her, though. Okay, shout out to Shay Ma. We definitely will be posting it. That is our mom of the week. Okay, so this was a great episode. Um, don't forget. Um, thank you guys. We want to thank you guys for listening, for tuning in to another episode. Please, please, please subscribe to our podcast. We really appreciate it. We thank everyone for listening. And we hope that you take the time out to leave us a review on whatever platform that you are listening to us on. It will only take a few minutes. Please help us out with that. Also, if you just want to randomly shout out our page, please, please, please shout out our page so that we can gain more followers and more listeners. Also, please make sure you follow us on every social media platform. We are on Facebook, Instagram. YouTube, TikTok, and Twitter, and New Age Mamas. Um, We have so much more in store for you guys, um, especially with the summer coming up. So can't wait to see you guys soon. And that's a wrap.